Welcome to Contemporary Retirement. Contemporary Retirement is a public interest program focused on the retirement community. Every program has segments on legal, financial, and health issues affecting the retirement community. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a major grant from the Family Heritage Trust Company. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored by Family Heritage Trust Company. The Family Heritage Trust Company is an independent bank chartered trust company established by local professionals to provide fiduciary services including fee-based investment advice, trust services, retirement planning, and tax planning. The Family Heritage Trust Company is committed to client service in our communities. For more information, call the Family Heritage Trust Company at 301-631-5900. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a grant from R. Thomas Murphy & Associates, P.C. R. Thomas Murphy & Associates is one of Franklin County's leading law firms, emphasizing estate, trust, elder law, and medical assistance planning. Welcome to the Is It Legal feature on Contemporary Retirement. Is It Legal focuses on the legal issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Tom Murphy from the R. Thomas Murphy Law Firm with offices in Waynesboro, Chambersburg, and McConnellsburg. Welcome to the show, Tom. Good morning. You know, Tom, we've been talking about a concerted effort by long-term care facilities to divert people away from seeking quality elder law advice. Yeah, you're seeing people who know the rules but are purposely failing to tell families the whole story as to their options and the techniques available to protect themselves. And we have a lot of issues here that make it even more difficult. For instance, we have single person rules and married couple rules. Everybody thinks it's a monolith, but in fact there are two totally separate sets of rules depending on circumstances, with married couple rules designed to protect the healthy spouse, but single person rules not designed to provide an inheritance for children. Exactly, but yet there are techniques within both set of rules which allow us to protect and, and save money and, and develop uh, financial security for the healthy spouse and also reserves for individuals. You know, I don't know how to put it any simpler, so we'll just <laughs> flat out throw it out. If you're a spouse and you have your spouse is in a nursing home and you're private paying that nursing home bill and you have not gotten a consultation from a quality elder law attorney, let's make no mistake, you are making a mistake. Absolutely. You are buying a used car every month, essentially, because you're spending money that would be better served in your pocketbook for your financial security. And it could be protected in all probability. In all probability. There's very few situations where we're not able to do that. And so it, it's frustrating for us because we know how financially precarious it leads you're dealing with a married couple and they're paying $10,000 a month for one spouse's nursing home bill. You need to stop that. Right. Otherwise, you're going to impoverish yourself right. and leave yourself in a position where you can't take care of yourself. Exactly. And sometimes we'll have someone who will say, I, I feel I have to spend this money. But they're not looking at the reality sometimes because that money needs to be put aside for your well-being. You may need it. You know, and, and I've had people say, well, I called the government and they told me there's nothing <laughs> I can do. And I just think, can't think of anything that's sillier than relying on a government agency who is economically incented to not have you find out this information to suggest they're going to give you the best possible information. No doubt. And, and they know and they approve our applications all the time. And so, you know, it becomes a budgetary issue. If we can prevent or not have to pay for that person's care, that's better for our budget. And then we talk a little bit about some of the confusion that arises here. You know, I introduced you as having offices in Waynesboro, Chambersburg, and McConnellsburg. I know you routinely practice in about five western and central PA counties. Mm -hmm. And the reality is all five of those counties do this stuff different. Oh, yeah. We, you know, that's a, a common problem for us because we've got to learn to do the dance in each one of those counties based on the personalities of the caseworkers. So I know you face the same thing in Maryland. It's just that's the nature of these rules in the system. We routinely practice in six counties and all, they all do it different. They all have attitudinal different approaches. <laughs> and so one of the reasons is you and I sit here today is the fact is is that Pennsylvania and Maryland do it completely differently. Oh, absolutely. If you asked me to do a Maryland case, I, would, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And you know, it's just they make the rules difficult so that families don't know what's going on. Yeah, one of the things that we caution families about, particularly in some of our counties where you and I 
I are just five miles apart, right. is that sometimes we'll tell a family, you might be better off being in a Maryland facility, right. you might be better off being in a Pennsylvania facility. We're actually going to tell people that, and they need mm -hmm. to be paying attention because there are some benefits depending on what your circumstances well, are. That's an excellent point because, you know, the rules are so different and the, the circumstance is so unique, and, and so you want to be able to play well within that system. You know, in Maryland there's some excellent continuing care you know, communities and things of that sort that we don't have and vice versa. So you need to be thinking about the big picture. Tom, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on our program. You're welcome. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Few things in life are as important as family. Leave your insurance worries to us. Write Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. Every life that meets its end Leaves a heart for love to mend Sister, brother, family, friends Are left to carry on When the loss seems more than you can bear It's nice to know that we'll be there At Double Save Fiery Funeral Home We care Call Ed Lowe to help put your mind at ease. Welcome to a special guest feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various issues which are of importance to the retirement community. With me today is Carolyn True, Director of Frederick County Department, Department of Aging. Yes. Welcome to the show, Carolyn. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Carolyn, first of all, you know, people might be watching the show and think, well, this is Frederick. I don't need to pay any attention to it. But tell us about the scope of the Older Americans Act. Well, I think what's important for people to um, realize as they're listening and watching this show is that there are 19 area agencies on aging in this state. And we all provide very much the same level of service, the same kinds of services as required by the Older Americans Act. And how about those people in watching in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Virginia? Well, the Older Americans Act is a nationwide act, so um, those states, the people in those states do receive the same kind of services as prescribed by the Older Americans Act. It might might be delivered in different ways, um, but they still can receive a congregate meal, they can still receive transportation, or the, uh, people in long-term care facilities can still receive the services of an ombudsman to help them navigate through being in a nursing facility. So the, the services are the same across the country, it's how they might be delivered that might be different in a particular state. And of course, as we're well aware, a bunch of these agencies have differing names, but, the, the, but the goal is still the same. The goal is still the same. The goal is still, as, as far as the Older Americans Act is to, concerned, um, the goal is still to serve people age 60 and over um, with um, services and programs that help them age in place. And one of the big misconceptions, and we try to talk about this all the time, is that only people who are of lower economic social status receive any services from the Area Agency on Aging. And that, at one point back in 1964 when the Older Americans Act was authorized, that might have been the case, but we've really broadened um, the services that we provide so that we're not only serving the more vulnerable, frail adult, but we're also serving active senior adults who want to stay engaged in the community and want to have activities and services to keep them young. You know, and part of it is, too, is a big service that you provide is that I don't care what your economic station in life is, as you become eligible for Medicare and perhaps you're no longer covered by an employer health plan, a whole bunch of very important decisions have to be made. Especially when it comes to Medicare Part D because between October 15th and December 7th, that's the opportunity for individuals to take a look at their drug plan and make certain that it will fit their needs come January 1st. Because if you don't look at your drug plan and you find that things have changed, 
you, either your prescriptions have changed or the dosage has changed or it's no longer covered by your current plan, come January 1st, if you haven't looked at that, you may find that your um, prescriptions aren't covered to the same extent that they once were or maybe they're not covered at all, which means more out-of-pocket costs for you. And there's a guarantee and the guarantee is that Part D plan is going to change. Now that change may or may not affect you, but it doesn't change the fact it changed, and if it continuously changes, it's sooner or later probably gonna affect you. Absolutely, so that's why we encourage every year um, people to take a look at their drug plan and make sure it makes sense for them. But they're not out on an island because you actually have a service model for that. We can help with that. Um, we, we sit down with everybody um, who comes to us and we take a look at what their service, what their drug plan is, and we help them make the right decision. They ultimately will make the decision, but we will guide them and offer suggestions and then help them through that process. Well, and then another even more fundamental issue too is that they oftentimes are looking at Medicare supplements, mm -hmm. and you, that person in your agency is called yes. a health insurance advocate. That's can correct. also help them identify what's good coverage for them as well. Yes. Through the state and the federal government, we have what's called the, the State Health Insurance Program, SHIP, S-H-I-P. And we have counselors, both trained um, staff and volunteers, um, who can help those individuals take a look at those supplements, see if it makes sense for them, because sometimes it does not. Um, sometimes uh, just given other insurances or given um, per, uh, particular physical conditions, it may not make sense to have that supplement, but we walk them through the process, we take a look at their income, we take a look at other conditions going on with that particular individual, and we help them um, through the process to see if it does make sense for them or not. And there are a multitude of other programs there, but just going back to my original premise, the selection of a health insurance program is completely relevant to whether you're a person of limited means or a person of a lot of means. These are still very important decisions, and many times, uh, you know, you provide an impartial input into that decision making. And honestly, that's what I like about what we do, because we can provide objective, honest, um, information. We, you know, we aren't paid by insurance companies. We are um, just trained staff people who, very well trained staff, I might say, as well as our volunteers, who we have nothing to gain except providing accurate, good information so that people can make a decision that is best for them. Well, as we wrap up here, Carolyn, what's the phone number for your organization? Thanks. The number is 301-600-1605. Carolyn Zoyce, thanks for taking time to appear on the Thank program. Thank you. I appreciate it. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Tranquility at Fredericktown Assisted Living and Memory Care provides a warm, home-like atmosphere that promotes daily life enrichment. At Tranquility, our medical director is a geriatric physician. Our professionals support and understand the various stages associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. We have on-site physical, occupational, and speech therapists, as well as around-the-clock licensed nurses. For more information, give Tranquility at Fredericktown a call today, because everyone deserves great care. Let us do the caregiving so you and your loved one can embrace life again. Guys, I thought you were supposed to be working in the yard. But Dad, just one more bid on HurleyAuctions.com. If you haven't visited HurleyAuctions.com, you don't know what you're missing. Whether you're buying or selling, antique cars, tractors, boats, or real estate, you can do it all at HurleyAuctions.com. Get to know Dr. Carrie Hesley at Diagnostic Imaging Services. What I find most rewarding is caring for women through our Women's Imaging Center. We have a caring staff that will ease patients through an ultrasound, bone densitometry, breast biopsy, or mammogram. Our health team is sensitive to emotions involved in women's imaging and understands that every woman is at risk for breast cancer. Providing the community with a center that is so dedicated to breast health and the imaging needs of women is something special. DIS Women's Imaging Center, providing women with progressive care. Welcome to Contemporary Health Scene. Contemporary Health Scene focuses on the health issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Heather Vinkovich, who is the Development Office at Star Community. Welcome to the show, Heather. Hello, thank you. 
You know, Star Community is uh, one of my favorite organizations. I've been involved with it on the periphery for almost my entire legal career because it addresses a very specific constituent need that very other few other organizations in the community support. Tell us a little about it. Um, Star Community is an organization um, that works with individuals with special needs and um, disabilities. We service them through residential um, program that we do have and um, we have 10 residential homes right on property and we did actually end up um, purchasing a new home so that'll be the 11th home that we have um, and we also have a day program that works with individuals during the day they come in we have different crews they can work for teaching them different skills life skills different crafts gardening as well as the equestrian center we have that does therapeutic work with them um, helps to strengthen them keep their muscles working well and um, teaches them how to care for animals and um, do other types of um, farm work. You know, one of the things about special needs, it's, it's not like raising a child, you know, who's going to pursue some sort of a normalcy. You know, special needs is a lifetime. And primary caregivers for special needs on whole are their parents who are also 20, 30, 40 years older than the special needs child. And so the reality is part of what STAR Community does is help them develop a lifelong plan for that special needs child. Absolutely. Um, we bring them in. We, we do care for adults um, primarily through our residential and day program, which range, they can come in when they're about 20, usually 21, and we try to keep them there through the rest of their life. We um, involve them in different activities. We involve their family with working with them. It's a great open door policy we have so that the individuals can come and stay, be active, um, learn new skills, and as well as their family coming in and being involved um, and with them as well. And you just said something really important. We want to differentiate. There's two programs. There are big programs. There's mm -hmm. a day program and there's a residential program. Correct. So oftentimes families will just use the day program, you know, for a number of years while the parent is still able to be a caregiver. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. The day program is highly sought after. Um, we have a lot of different programs and Star Community concentrates on working with each person, getting them to work to the best of their abilities, teaching them skills, getting them out into the community. Um, we have the greenhouses so they can go out and learn the gardening and different types of, um, you know, crews wear recycling and um, doing yeah, laundry. recycling, you got that computer, yeah. you know, it, it, so, and you bring them in, they take them apart, recycle it, and and the people actually work for their the crews that they and actually yes. get paid. Yes, they do get a stipend amount and they get very excited about that, but it, it's important to keep them busy. It, it's better to have them being you know, concentrating and learning these skills, and they're so proud when they're able to go out and do something and learn and work right alongside of us instead of watching us do something, and I think that's very important. And then you have the equestrian program, which I just absolutely love, and we would essentially challenge every one of our viewers, and they don't have to be special needs, to come nope. out and participate in the equestrian program we can put you on a horse. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, the Equestrian Center is amazing. Now, the Equestrian Center does work with children, um, it, it, you know, a special need and abled. Um, and we have children in there as, I think, 18 months might have been the youngest that we had um, that we were able to work with. And um, it strengthens their muscles. The horse is amazing. I never realized the impact until I started working here and went in there and watched the lessons. And it just, it touches your heart because it, there's so much. There's individuals that are nonverbal and they're attempting to speak um, or communicate with you in a way they never have before. So have the impact is very strong. And everything else. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how physically incapacitated mm -hmm. you are, we can still put yeah. you on a horse. And, and you know, some of the individuals, are kind of hesitant at getting on the horse, we have activities they can do beside the horse to get comfortable with the horse, t learning and teaching and all of that. So it is, it's very amazing. And I want to encourage people to realize that it's an open campus. You know, people can come, they mm -hmm. can use the walking trails, you know, they can participate in the activities that are open to the public. I recently had a retired woman who, uh, you know, was pining to me that she had come off the farm and could never ride a horse again. She was in her late 80s and we took her out to Star Community. She got a horseback ride. I have pictures of her actually, yes, and she was, she was quite enthused with it. She loved it. I think that was... I mean, the smiles on her face. So I want to encourage that. people. It does need support, though. It's a not-for-profit, so if yes, somebody did want to contact the development office and provide some support, how could they do so? Um, they could give us a call at 301-791-0011 and ask for development. 
um, and we can give them all the information they would need. They can also go on to our website at starcommunityinc.org and there's a lot of information on there about the different programs as well as a way to donate or information to contact um, Star Community in regard to what they're interested and in. And if you have a, a disabled or severely disabled person in your family, you might want to call them and start exploring what those options Absolutely. might Absolutely. It doesn't hurt to give us a call, come out. We do tours. We can introduce them and show them to the um, residential and the day program as well as the equestrian center and let them see what Star Community is all about. Heather, thanks for taking time to appear on our program. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. The Community Foundation, through its scholarship programs and through its strategic grants, has been a positive influence for change. Last year, change in Frederick County was influenced thanks to nearly 1,800 caring donors. Everyone can help. Your influence is key. Help us proactively focus on where we need to be investing our energy in the future. Albright, Crumbacker, Mal, and Itell are a full-service firm that provides elder care services, including managing incoming bills, bill payment, depositing checks, balancing bank statements, and preparing, planning, and filing personal tax returns. Put your mind at ease and call us today. Welcome to the Making Sense feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various financial issues of importance to the retirement community. With me today is Pete Alexander, a partner in the regional accounting firm of Albright, Crumbacker, Mao, and Itell with offices in Hagerstown, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Welcome to the show, Pete. Great to be here, Mike. So, Pete, you know, we've had all of this stuff about the tax law, a bunch of yelling and screaming and so forth. And, and I think one of the things is you and I were talking before we came on the air today, for many middle class folks, really not much of a change. Yeah, I mean, for the people watching our show, uh, the changes aren't as large, especially if you don't have dependent children. Uh, the biggest thing they did that everybody hears about is the doubling of the uh, standard deduction. What that means is that you always had a choice of taking the standard deduction or itemizing your deductions. So a lot less people are going to itemize. But when you look at the elder community, they got basically when you took your standard deduction, your personal exemption, the extra personal deduction for being over 65, those people got $23,000 tax-free that they could earn every year before they even touched tax. Under the new law, even though they really ramped up that standard deduction, they took away your personal exemptions. So when you add and compare the two laws, you had $23,000 under the old law, tax-free. Under the new law, you have $26,000 if you don't itemize. So you really only got $3,000 more if you didn't itemize. If you do itemize, it could actually hurt you if your itemized deductions were over 16000 because you're losing your personal exemptions now under the new law. So it's an interesting test, and as uh, most people would have pointed out, that it was much more heavily weighted to the wealthy than it was to middle class folks. Might be a little bit of a benefit, and that's fine. But one of the things in terms of our constituency that was important, and it was on the table right to the end, was the potential loss of medical expense yeah, deductions. What they yeah, what they did is they left the medical deduction fully in place. Uh, individuals over 65 got to deduct their medical uh, deductions in excess of 7.5%. They made that permanent. They left that as an itemized deduction. And they also made it now for people under 65 who had to have over 10% of their income to deduct medical. They gave them 7.5%. The other thing they put into the law was a new $500 tax credit for people taking care of any dependent over the age of 17, and that means people taking care of their uh, parents, if they are indeed a dependent, they'll get an additional $500 tax credit. You know, and from terms of our constituency, that medical expense deduction became important because we've talked a number of times on this show about the fact that you may be able to get a deduction for medical expenses for required assisted living, a medical expense deduction for required nursing home stays that are unreimbursed by insurance, and that oftentimes created an opportunity to get money out of your IRA relatively low or no tax. Right, exactly. That, what that did, as we talked before, even if you uh, are just itemizing, you want to make sure you use up all your current deductions because if you have $50,000 of medical deductions this year, but your total income, not counting Social Security, is only 10000 
then you're letting $40,000 of deductions go to waste. So you may as well pull that money out of your IRA. You're still in that same example now. And so you would end up being able to essentially withdraw that money without any significant tax associated with it because you would have an offsetting medical expense deduction. Exactly. And as we said before, uh, earlier in the show, since you're tax-free up to 26000 most in, and you were only 23 before, most individuals can take out 26000 if they have no other type of income before they trigger any tax. Then they only have 10% tax on the next 20000 and they did lower the 15% bracket down to 12%. So there's a lot of tax savings there for people on the retirement community that may be wanting to pull money out of their retirement account. And yet, ironically, when that person has that medical expense, they've been drilled into their head that you never take money out of the IRA. It's always taxable. You're going to pay taxes on it. And in fact, in the example we gave, you just let a $40,000 tax deduction get away that might represent ten dollars to $15,000 in tax savings had you utilized it. Yeah, and the, and the key part of that is, remember, when you have money in your IRA, if you don't pay tax on it during your life and you leave it to your heirs, they are going to pay tax on it. And quite honestly, often your heirs are in their high earning years when you uh, pass away and therefore they're going to pay tax even at a higher rate. So it's not just we're not trying to accelerate tax, we're trying to get money out of an IRA tax free that at some point even if it's your heirs somebody's going to have to pay tax on that but if we can move it out of the IRA you do not have to spend it, put it in the same savings vehicle you had and then you got that money into a regular account tax free. And it can be inherited by the children tax-free then. Tax-free. And we do like tax-free. Pete, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. Great to be here, Mike. Thank you from Contemporary Retirement. Remember a more carefree time? Leave your insurance worries to us. Write Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. These days it seems like everything's online and filling out claim forms and receiving and paying bills online isn't always easiest. That's why we at Quality First Insurance encourage you to just give us a call. Let us help. Hi there. I'm Paul Sweeney with Quality First Insurance and it's still just this simple. Our offices are open every weekday where you'll be able to call and speak to real live people. No detail was missed. I'm so glad that I turned to Quality First Insurance. I've recommended Quality First Insurance to my friends who've been just as satisfied. If you're not happy with what you're paying for Medigap, or more importantly, not happy with your service, give us a try. We're locally owned, and we take the time to provide you with the best. We are Quality First Insurance, and our mission is to provide quality products to quality people. Pick up the phone and give us a call today at 800-745-1411.